After the release of my latest two videos, comments on Dr. Zakenaik and Sheikh Yasser Qadi's views on masturbation and seven tips to quit masturbation, so many people have contacted me asking for another video to explain the damage that masturbation could lead a person to. Well, this video is for you. Before we get started, I want you to remember that there are a lot of research out there that says masturbation is healthy. Yes, you heard it right. There are a lot of studies, a lot of research that says masturbation can become healthy. But if you really pay close attention to these studies, you will notice that these researchers are not talking about the act of masturbation itself or self-stimulation. They are talking about orgasm or reaching that climax to release these substances. From that perspective, I agree that it is healthy. It is something necessary. It helps you relax. It helps you sleep better. At a times, it relieves you from stress and anxiety. It reduces blood pressure and improves blood flow in the body. So after learning about all these benefits, should we masturbate now? The answer is absolutely not. Because if you're unmarried, meaning you didn't experience sexual intimacy yet, or you do not masturbate, your body will release these substances naturally through wet dreams or as it's called nocturnal emission. So why should you force it through masturbation? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda when he saw one of the companions desiring to purchase a piece of meat, halal meat, he told him, Awa kullama ashtahayt ashtarayt. Is it every time you desire something, you go for it, you purchase it? Similarly, you shouldn't just relieve yourself every time you get aroused sexually. Now, what are the harms or the damage that masturbation could lead a person to? Before getting into that, let me be very, very clear. As I said in the previous videos, masturbation definitely, definitely, definitely is better than zina. If you're caught in a situation where you are about to commit the act, then masturbation would be much better exit from this major sin. However, it's not okay if it's compulsive, addictive, and interfering in your day-to-day -day activities. It's not okay if it's affecting on your studies, if it's affecting on your relationships, if it's affecting on your health. The only okay time for masturbation, as I mentioned earlier, is saving you from falling into that major sin of zina. Masturbation could lead to devastating mental and physical illnesses. For example, men in their 20s, 30s, and 40s may suffer from prostate cancer. Who are these men? Those who masturbate regularly. Yes, I know the same study said men above 50, 50 to 60 years who masturbate also may reduce the risk of pro prostate cancer, but what are the chances? Will you take a chance? What else masturbation could lead to? Men who masturbate regularly are less sensitive during sexual intimacy, leading to what? Difficulty in reaching climax or premature ejaculation. What else? Men who masturbate regularly may suffer from erectile dysfunction, inability to function sexually with a real life partner. And those who are able to continue the sexual act, they may experience less firmness in their private part. Women too are not excluded from the harms of masturbation. They also experience what is known as situational anorgasmia or difficulty to reach climax with real life partners. There are also a lot of neurological changes that take place in one's brain as a result of masturbation is especially to pornography. And this is the reality most people masturbate to porn today. So what happens when they masturbate to porn? Overproduction of the pleasurable hormone known as dopamine in one's brain, leading to what? Reduction of the sensitivity in the dopamine receptors, which is the exact situation that cocaine addicts experience. And what does that lead to? Needing and wanting more escalation of the activity to masturbation pornography leading to what lack of interest in real life partners what else happened when you masturbate to porn regularly the reduction of testosterone hormone the hormone that regulates your sexual drive or libido however when you attain your sexual pleasure through screens like pornography and masturbation testosterone level decreases and when that happened, it leads to so many illnesses like loss of muscles, depression, mood swinging, aging, and lots of erectile issues. Now, how about experiencing orgasm through intercourse with one's spouse? Will that lead to the same problems that we just listed? Interestingly, not. Why so? Because during intercourse, we go through completely different experience. We are not dealing with pixels and imagery anymore. We are dealing with real life partner. We have communications, eye contact, exchange of sweet words, the touch, 
all these experiences are real, they're not fake anymore. And that leads to beneficial changes, hormonal changes in your brain, which leads to completely different results. So what is the solution, brother? You make it so difficult for us. Here are three possible solutions, inshallah. According to Dr. Sam Robbins, he said, reduce masturbation as much as you can. He's a non-Muslim. He's actually advising his patients to sometimes masturbate, but we're Muslims. We say what? Quit once and for all and leave it only for your partners or when you are at the edge of committing zina. Number two, quit pornography, cold turkey, once and for all. No negotiation about this point. It will increase your chances. If you're single, to experience pleasurable sexual intercourse with your inshallah future wife, or if you're married and addicted to pornography, it will also enhance your sexual skills inshallah ta'ala once you get rid of your addiction. Number three and most importantly, make sure to live a meaningful life, a life with a purpose. Be yourself in the sense that if you slip, if you relapse, if you are experiencing a serious problem when it comes to masturbation and pornography addiction, to seek help, be yourself, be natural. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wouldn't find a problem in telling him and telling other people in the community about the, the, the problems that they are going through in order to find a solution. So don't be ashamed to reach out people of knowledge, people of experience to help you out with your problems. Be humble enough to admit that your addiction had over powered you and you can't do anything about it. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arda, may Allah be pleased with him, talking about the Sahaba, he said, Man kana mustannan falyastanna biman qad mat. Whoever wanted to follow a path, let him follow the path of those who passed away. He was referring to the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, Kanu wallahi khayra hadhihi al-umma. They were by Allah the best of this generation. Confirming what the Prophet sallallahu said, خَيْرُ nas qarni thumma الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ thumma الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The best of all people is my generation, then the one that followed, and then the one that follows. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, went on to describe their virtues. And one of the points that I wanted to highlight is, he said about them that they were the least superficial. They were real. They were honest to themselves. So be honest with yourself and go and find the necessary solution to end this disease once and for all. May Allah protect us all. Inshallah ta'ala, if you found this video beneficial, inshallah share it with others. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.